Hello, River West kids. Hey, it's me, Max Thunder. That's right, adventure man, international explorer, wilderness pioneer and lover of all things of the outdoors. You know, I don't mean to brag, but you know, I, I could build a fire just with two sticks. As long as one of those sticks is a match, I could build a fire, that's right. Hey, it is so good to be with you today because you know what? I almost didn't make it. Okay, last week, top secret assignment. I was in my fighter jet, okay? Russian airspace, um, you know, just, just north of Beaverton, going about Mach 12, faster than the speed of light, when I got hit by a missile. It was a Nerf missile, all right? There was this kid like jumping on his trampoline, shot me with a Nerf gun, but you know what? I had to, I had to make an emergency landing. I landed right down there in McMinnville. And guess what? My fighter jet, the newest addition to the Wings and Wave, water park. You should check it out. Hey, I live to tell the tale, and I'm so glad I did because there is nowhere else I'd rather be. So pumped for the teaching, for the games, for the craft. It's gonna be awesome, but as always, we're gonna kick it off with some worship. I will dance, I will sing to be mindful, my king. Nothing, Lord, hindering, it's passion in my soul. I will dance, I will sing to be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, hindering, it's passion in my soul. I will dance, I will sing to be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, hindering, it's passion in my soul. I will dance, I will sing to be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, hindering, it's passion in my soul. I'll be cold. Even more undignified than this So what's this foolishness But I'll be cool Even more undignified than this and I will dance, I will sing To be mad for my king Nothing Lord hindering It's passion in my soul I will dance, I will sing To be mad for my king Nothing Lord hindering It's passion in my soul I'll be cold Even more undignified than this Some would say it's foolishness But I'll be calm Even more undignified than this to be with you guys today and I'm actually going to start off with a question. Um, how many of you guys have been to the top of something really, really high off the ground? Like maybe you've been to the top of a really tall building or a really tall bridge. I mean, it could be a crazy experience to look down when you are standing at a significant distance from the ground. 
And it makes me think of an experience I had a few summers ago when our family went to Crater Lake. And we were with my sister's family and we decided to do the hike actually down to the water. And at the end of that hike, there are these cliffs that you can stand on and you can actually jump into Crater Lake. And those of you that know my husband, Pastor Mike, of course he said, we all gotta jump in. Everybody's gotta do it. So we did. All right, the whole group goes ex until the very end, it was just my sister and I. And we're standing on top of this ledge and I actually have a picture of you so you guys can see. Here my sister and I are on top of this ledge looking down and it might not look like that big of a distance for, for you from where you're sitting, but for us standing up there, it looked like a really long way to jump. But we went for it, we jumped in, it was freezing, but I'm so glad we did it, it was super fun. And today we're actually talking about a group of people in Genesis chapter 11 that are attempting to build a super, super tall tower. In fact, they want it to be so tall, they want it to reach the heavens. That's a pretty ambitious goal. All right, um, but before we jump into our story, let's review. Where have we been um, in River West Kids so far? So the first week in September, we talked about creation. God created the heavens and the earth. God created man in his own image. Adam and Eve were living with God in perfect harmony in the Garden of Eden. All right, week two, we talked about sin. Sin entered the world and changed everything. Sin actually broke that perfect relationship that God and man were enjoying together. Um, but we know that God actually put in motion a plan to ultimately send a redeemer that would restore that right relationship between God and man. All right, week three talked about Noah. Remember Noah, he lived in a time where the population of the earth, they were described as being wicked. They were living in complete opposition to God. And Noah was the exception. He was described as being righteous. So God basically started over. He sent a flood to destroy everything, but he spared Noah and his family. Um, and that's what we're picking up this week, all right? So Noah's kids have had kids. Those kids have had kids. Those kids have had more kids, and the earth is populated again. And this group of people described in Genesis 11, they have are sharing one common language, and they're looking to settle down, all right? So let's read. Genesis 11, verses 1 and 2. All right, this is what it says. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. All right, so you might be thinking, so far, so good, right? The people, they're, they're sharing a language, they're looking to settle down. But it does not take long for this story to take a turn for the worse. All right, this is verse 4. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking, well, that doesn't sound so bad. I mean, they just want to build a tower. All right. But there's actually two concerning phrases, I think, in this verse that makes us see their hearts. All right. And the sin that's there. OK, the first phrase that reaches to the heavens. All right, think about it. They want to build this tower so that they could be on the same level as God. Okay, they either have a really simple view of God that they could think they could reach him so easily, or they have a really elevated view of themselves. But either way, this is a problem. All right, concerning phrase number two. All right, it says that we may make a name for ourselves. I mean, this project, this tower, it's all about them, right? They want all the glory. Now, what does that mean when I say they want the glory? I think it means they want the recognition. They want the honor. They want the credit. Um, so let's think of maybe an example of what a modern-day person would be that wants all the glory for themselves. Maybe that could be... Um, like an athlete, okay? Let's say an athlete who has just won a huge victory and they're looking to get all the glory, the honor, the recognition with no thought given to maybe their teammates or their coach and ultimately to God, right? Their creator who made them and gave them the ability to play this sport, right? And we can all think of examples of the athlete that wants the glory for themselves and then the athlete that actually gives the glory back to God. I mean, there's a stark difference in that. Okay, another example. Maybe it's the person that has a lot, accumulated a lot of wealth and they do not recognize that wealth, material things, are actually gifts from God. So they're accumulated all these material things. They're storing up all these treasures for themselves 
with zero recognition of God's role in their life. All right, now the opposite would be someone who does recognize that the material things they have in their lives are gifts from God. Um, and when I think of that example, I think of my mom. She is a great example of someone who is so thankful for all she has and really sees them as gifts from God. And she's so quick to share and to be generous and to thank God. Like I remember growing up and people were always borrowing her car, staying at her house, coming over for meals constantly giving away money to things that she felt like had eternal value. Um, and it was just, it was a really cool way to grow up but for, with that as an example. So back to our story. Okay, here are the people in Genesis 11. They're building this tower and they're a rebellious people. They're involved in this godless effort to build a gigantic tower that is human made for man's glory alone. Now, this is a problem of the heart, right? And God sees our hearts. He knows what's going on. And he realizes, you know, if he does not intervene, there's going to be no end to their rebellion. So that's exactly what he does, all right? In verses 7 and 8, it says that he confuses their language. Okay, now let's think what that looks like for a second. All right, let's pretend I am building my section of the tower, all right? So I'm going to pick up some bricks here, slide them over. I'm building my tower. I'm wanting it to re look really impressive. I'm excited about making a big name for myself, putting more and more blocks on. And then someone comes over, and he, he asks me maybe for a tool, or he asks to borrow a brick. But I have no idea what he's saying because he's speaking to me in Japanese. And then I look to the person on my other side, and he it starts to speak to me in Hungarian. And I realize we're all speaking different languages. No one can understand anyone. The work stops because no progress can be made because we're in confusion. There's chaos, right? It's crazy. And that's actually why it's called Tower of Babel because Babel means confusion. There was mass confusion, all right? So this is how the passage ends, all right? This is verse nine. This is why it was called Babel because the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Okay. It's kind of interesting because really that's kind of what our situation is today, right? There's lots and lots of different languages spoken all over the world. People are settled, again, all over the world. Um, and I actually looked up this week how many languages are spoken in our world. And it's kind of more than I thought, all right? So I'm going to see if you guys can guess. I realize I can't see you, but if you're at home, raise your hand if you think that possibly there are maybe a thousand languages spoken on the earth. Okay, it's more. Raise your hand if you think maybe 3,000 languages are spoken on the, our planet. Okay, it's more. All right, it's estimated that there's a minimum of 6,500 languages spoken on our planet. I mean, it's crazy that so many languages, and it's hard to imagine like a people group that covers our globe to ever come together and to unify around anything, right? Because there's such diversity in languages being spoken. And this makes me think of actually a verse in Revelation that's really encouraged and speaks to this point, all right? So this is Revelation 7, 9. It says, After I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. All right? So cool. Now, remember, Revelation is written by John, and he's looking. This is a vision that God has given him to look to the future, what the future holds. So one day there's going to be a time where people from every language will stand before Jesus and praise him. Right? And why would this happen? Like, why would people unite around this? It's because Jesus is the one that is worthy of all of our praise and our honor. And, you know, when I think about this story of the Tower of Babel, it makes me realize, you know, we should not be making monuments to ourselves. We should not be seeking glory for ourselves because ultimately God is the one that is only worthy of worship and praise. And, you know, when I think about verses about praise, I love the ones that have mountain imagery because in my mind, mountains are God-made towers, right? They reflect his beauty and his majesty and his power. Like, I just love the mountains. So I've got two verses for you, all right? First one comes out of the book of Psalms. All right, this is Psalm 121, 1 and 2. 
I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Don't you love that? Like, who is the source of our strength and our help? It's our maker. It's our creator. It's the Lord God. All right, the next one, Nahum 1.5. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his presence, the world and all who live in it. Right, that's pretty powerful. Like the mountains quake, right? The world trembles in his presence. Like God is the one that has complete dominion and power and authority over all creation. He is worthy of our praise. All right, so as we wrap up this story, guys, I think this the Tower of Babel, it makes us think of basically two questions. First, from the story, what do we learn about God? And second, from the story, what do we learn about ourselves? Okay, what do we learn about God? He is the one that's worthy of worship and praise. He alone is God and we are not. All right? And what do we learn about ourselves? I think as humans, we have the tendency to want to seek glory for ourselves and kind of forget about God. So as followers of Jesus, we want to to take notice of that and think, how can we stop that from happening in our own lives? All right, so here are some questions you guys can kick around as a family. One, just where do we see that in our culture? Where do we see that in our own lives where we're looking for glory and forgetting about God? And then two, what are things that we can praise and worship God for? This week, like think of things that you just see or things that you observe about your own life that you just want to give God praise for. So I'm going to end us in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for this passage and for this story about the Tower of Babel, Lord, because it does, it makes us realize that you alone are worthy of our worship and our praise, that you alone are God, and you have complete power and dominion over all of creation. And Lord, help us to see ways in our lives where we are seeking glory for ourselves and we're forgetting to recognize your work in our lives. Lord, help us to be quick to be thankful and again, to return the glory back to you. So, Lord, I just thank you for this day and ask your blessing on every family that's represented here. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. And now I'm going to turn it over to Nicole for the quick version. Hey, friends. Teacher Nicole here. I'm going to tell you the story, the quick recap story, of the Tower of Babel today. It comes from Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Now, in those days, the whole world only had one language one common speech that they spoke to one another. And as people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and they settled there. And they said to each other, hey, come, let's make bricks. They used brick back then instead of stones. And they used tar for mortar to set the bricks. And they said to each other, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens. That means it's really tall. So that we may make a name for ourselves. They wanted to make a name for themselves instead of God. I just have to warn you, foreshadowing, that's never a good idea. Oh, so they said, otherwise, if we don't do this, we're gonna be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But God came down to see the city and the tower that the people were building. And he said, if as one people speaking one language, they have begun to do this, then nothing that they plan will be impossible for them. So come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. Can you imagine that? All of a sudden, somebody that you used to be able to talk to all the time, now you guys couldn't understand each other? How weird would that be? It would kind of be a little bit creepy too. Oh man, I'm glad we were not there. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city because they couldn't work together anymore. And that is why it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world and from there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole world earth. The end. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord's the everlasting God. Let's do that again. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord's the everlasting God. The creator of all of the Grow 
tired, he won't grow weary, his understanding no one can fathom. He will not grow tired, he won't grow weary, his understanding no one can fathom. Today we talked about, you know, that tower that the people in Genesis were building? What is it called? Babel, 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 I don't know. Anyway, look up how to pronounce it and let me know. So our craft for today, you guessed it, it's the tower. I know, shocking. So print it off and then of course, what are you going to do first? You're going to color it. Once you've done that, bam. You're obviously going to grab your scissors and cut along that dotted line again. Oh, you guys are just so good at this. So once you cut along the dotted line, gonna fold your picture like that. Boom, boom. And you're gonna just cut whoop, along that dotted line. Pretty exciting. Do you guys see these guys? They're like fighting because they can't understand each other. Do you ever fight with your siblings because you can't understand each other? Your little sister says, oh, you can't have that because that's mine or, or maybe she can't talk yet and so it's confusing and you get frustrated. <sighs> if we could all just understand each other, life would be a lot easier. So once you have that done, then look, Whoop. you can put the tower up. And then you can put it back down. And then you can put it back up. I know. It's, I know. It's pretty exciting. Have you guys built any towers this week? Maybe you should stop doing what you're doing right now and go build a tower together and talk through each thing together. And if you don't understand each other, say, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. Can you explain that differently? Because we each learn in different ways. Like, I'm a visual learner. What about you? <sighs> Can't wait to see you next week. Really hope you are doing well. We love you, and we'll see you soon. Hey, River West Kids. All right, we have been talking about the Tower of Babel today. So I've got a building challenge for you. All right, you can get out whatever you would like to build with. Maybe it's Legos, maybe it's Jenga blocks. I've got these kind of red cardboard blocks. Um, cups could work, all kinds of options. So basically build a tower as tall as you can make it without it falling over. And then instead of being the Tower of Babel, we're gonna make it the Tower of Praise. So at the top, write out a verse on a piece of paper and tape it to the very top of your tower. I've chosen the one out of Psalm 121 that I mentioned in the teaching today um, because I love that one. You know, I, I lift my eyes up, up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth, right? We want to give praise to the Lord today. And so at the top of your tower, think of a cool verse, write it on, and I would love to see some pictures of your cool tall towers. All right, have a great rest of your day. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe.